This video is brought to you by My Wallet. I recently picked up the X Bloom Brewer, which is a new brewer that's off of Kickstarter, and probably the best way to describe it is as a whole bean pod coffee machine. It's been a whole lot of fun brewing with, and as you can see, you can also use it with a reusable pod. There's some really interesting and novel technology that's built into this thing, and as an embedded engineer, I definitely had to tear this thing down and take a look inside. It arrived packaged in an impressively small box, and with a little bit of wiggling, I was able to remove a handsomely designed package inside. Inside this box, I found a grind settings guide for different brew methods, a quick guide for getting started, and a thank you card for backing the project, and a few packets of third wave water. Further inside, there's some more paper-based packaging, which I actually use this to transport the machine between my office and home. Uh, and then you find the pod dock, which holds the pod as the machine grinds and brews. A little more packaging to go through, and I could finally see the brewer in all of its glory. But, of course, I almost immediately dropped the lid right into the reservoir. Funnily enough, I read that this is a common mistake, and I've done it probably three times at this point. Fortunately, it's easy enough to extract, and this is probably a good point in time to notice that it has a 700 milliliter reservoir, which is good for about three drinks. All right, now for the fun stuff. Gotta prepare the room a bit because I don't have a proper workbench. Waiting for Grandpa Tate to bring over a space to work on, and here it is. As I looked for my first point of attack, I went ahead and removed the reservoir and also the grinder cover, which, as I've noticed, seems to help the grounds form an impressively flat pile in the pod. And you can see that process has helped along with this little paperclip looking thing attached to the spinning burr. At this angle, you can also see the four small conductors that manage to move the water around without any moving parts. High key, this is what sold me on this thing. I was seriously impressed. So around back, I immediately noticed four plastic covers, which I assumed would be my path into the machine. Eventually, I landed on using a small flat-headed screwdriver and very carefully removed all four of the covers. This is tricky because this is one of the few plastic surfaces on the machine, so it's easy to scratch this part. With all the covers out of the way, I had four small Phillips screws to remove. After removing them, I could pop open a few plastic clips and see I was making some good headway. But it seemed like something towards the bottom wouldn't give. Oh right, of course there are more screws hidden on the bottom. After taking those two out, nothing happened, so there must have been something under the label. And sure enough, I felt around and found one in the corner. I took that screw out, still nothing. Felt another, took it out, and at this point I started feeling a whole lot of screws under that label. So I took some more out and still just could not find out what was holding this panel in place. Eventually I decided to, ooh, USB port, take the whole label off and uncover a very unfunny number of screws of different sizes. Finally, I could feel the whole panel wanted to come off, so I flipped the machine back over and slowly started lifting it away. As I did this, I saw one electrical connector up top, which is used to detect the water in the reservoir, and disconnecting this was easy enough. And a coffee tech experience wouldn't be complete without a mysteriously obtained flesh wound. Very cool. Anyways, the panel was now hinged on just one connector, and I was pretty excited to get a pretty good view inside. I moved it around a bit and disconnected the last cable, which, along with the water level sensor above it, was holding that plastic panel to the rear. There was then a really nice view of the internals. Here we can see the water heater on the right, which appears to just have one temperature sensor on the outlet. Then there's this small PC fan that blows the steam away from the water outlet circuitry. Then directly below it, there's a small stepper motor that drives the pod left and right. And you can even make out two stops that let the motor know that it hits its left and right limit. Next, I wanted to find the water pump, so I turned the machine upside down again and removed some remaining screws that hold the reservoir receiver. This did the trick, so I turned it back upright. And at this point, I can already tell that I took off way too many screws because the base seemed nearly ready to come off. That receiver comes right out, and I can already see a very small DC motor. This drives a very small pump, which you can see right here. It's made by this brand that's new to me called PumTech. Now with that out of the way, there's a better view of the circuit boards, which seem to take up a surprising fraction of the space inside. I then removed two screws near the top, and the top panel came off very easily, but there's really nothing interesting up here other than some insulation. That top panel does come out pretty elegantly though, with two plastic hooks that hold it in place. Okay, now for the grinder. There are four screws holding the steel cover in place, and these look like they were designed to thread into plastic, so I'm assuming that's what's underneath. With the screws out, I could then pry the cover away and uncover basically nothing. 
Removing the inner burr was easy enough with an Allen key, and then I could take a closer look at that grinds distributor. Now, the burr is sprung, so it easily pops right out, and there it is. These are pretty high quality conical burrs that people seem to be pretty happy with, and the team went out of their way to make them long lasting with a special coating. Here's a closer view of the outer burr, in addition to the inner burr carrier, which appears to be stiff enough to avoid burr wobble and any resulting grind size inconsistencies. So reassembly is essentially everything in reverse, but I did encounter one challenge. The rear panel just refused to click back into place, and after scratching my head for a while, I realized that there was that cable for the water sensor that was in the way. Moving that further into the machine fixed that, and I had no other issues as everything popped into place. All the screws would go back in, the covers act like nothing happened, and I replaced that little label to pretend like I never voided the warranty. I spun it back around and nervously plugged it back in, and oh cool, no magic smoke. Okay, well, it works again, so I gotta go brew again, and uh, okay, see ya, bye.